Hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. How are we all doing? Rocking and rolling in a free world. Great to see everybody in here. 50 pips rocking, going. Let's do this. So 5th of April, 2017, no trade calls, no recommendations. Everybody responds for their own stuff. We're here for educational purposes only. So as usual, just trying to pay it forward, guys. Anything uh, uh, you want to talk about, just uh, hit me up. I'm more than happy to review any chart. Uh, don't want to go for too long. Want to keep this a little bit uh, short, uh, sweet. And again, um, market should be moving a little bit, so there'll be plenty of stuff to do. So uh, whatever you're looking at, I really don't don't care if uh, if the chart is up here on the platform. Uh, we'll talk talk about it. I'll, I'll review it um, as I buy some time, waiting for the questions to come in. You know, fairly uh, interesting day ahead. One would hope, even though hope is not a strategy. But again, quiet until we get the the services PMI. You know, that's going to be a focus, right? Cable, what's going on on GPV in general. Um, as we discussed, uh, you know, from last week going into this week, really the focus here is we're stuck in some kind of range. But keep an eye on those data points because every any time the data points is going to disappoint a little bit, cable should get sold. So GPV should get sold potentially hard depending on how much it disappoints. So that's really something to keep in mind. And then, of course, we got the ADP, the ISS. Sam, uh, crude oil inventories and the, the FOMC minutes. So again, um, it should be a fairly interesting day. Um, nothing much has uh, changed in terms of cable, right? We're stuck here inside this range, right? Um, bears still have a reason to stay bearish. Bulls still have a, a reason to stay bullish. And we're kind of stuck here, not going anywhere. You know, our outlook is the same. Uh, you know, uh, we like to look at both sides of the coin, but we're bearish. And here, in terms of uh, outlook, we would very much welcome to see a daily close back below this whole 124 zone, right? Which hopefully should add to the sell pressure, take out these lows, and then we get a little bit of traction to test back into these uh, into these uh, these lows 2150s, right? That's going to be the big uh, big focus here. Okay, so let's see what happens. Kiwi, sure. What's going on on Kiwi? So uh, full disclosure on Kiwi, as always, I want to be very very clear so you understand what's going on here. I am uh, long this morning on Kiwi for scalp. So here on Kiwi, um, I don't know if w what time frame you're looking at, Keen, but basically we had this move down and we discussed the fact that. This was very, very strong support, and we actually traded this to the long side for a move back here. I pretty much discussed one of these live. Very nice little risk reward, about 5%, a 0 0.5 risk for about 3% reward. Didn't get the full trade on, but um, played out quite nicely, right? Now, here, it's just choppy, right? It's extremely choppy. So you see the pressure. You've got a lot of pressure to the downside. You've got all these moving averages um, with overhead resistance. And here it's trying to, to base in a very choppy zone, okay? So inside this area, this is where we would call a lot of velocity of move inside range with not an awful lot going on, right? The sellers are defending these highs. The buyers are going to be defending these lows. So right here, you'll probably get a lot of potential air pockets. And in terms of bigger flows, bigger money, you know, nobody's going to change their mind depending on what happens inside the 7050 and the 69 does that make sense i think this is a, a an important point that a lot of people overlook especially if, you know in, in a lot of charts but if you're looking at this from a bigger time frame it needs to be clear that all things being equal as long as you're stuck inside this range nothing's changed right whether you're looking at it from a structural point of view whether you're looking at it from uh fundamentals tech what not a lot is changing on the bigger time frame right so you just got to let it and people get too too obsessed or too impatient if you look at it in terms of a shorter time frame which is what um we've been focusing on here right it's just it's 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 trying to base here right and and short term you get a little bit of a of, of a pop ideally just a little bit of a counter trend move you see here how we're kind of stuck inside this chop zone but what do you have here um so can you see here we've got this zone where we tried to base in the past right this is a whole area we got a very nice trade uh, long for about 15 pips or so and it's basing inside this zone right four hour 
holding positive right here. So the only thing we can say is, okay, we're in a chop zone. Is there some kind of level inside this chop zone? Sure, this is the level. This is an area that's been trying to be supported and we're chopping around here, right? What's been happening in a shorter time frame from a one hour, and again, there's moves inside moves. We've held here for a long, long time this morning. We've come out, we clipped those lows, and we're not getting any kind of follow through, right? So even though this is not a particularly high odds trade, you know, the payout, right? If you get long on this failure to hold here with a stop below, it means that essentially you're looking at this, this is your risk on the trade, right? And if we pop higher anywhere into even these descending moving averages or back into this bigger move, you know, you've got very decent uh, risk reward, right? So that's that's all I'd be looking at short term, but uh, bigger term daily, it's very, very choppy, right? And again, here's just a very little move, um, an area to try and scalp a little bit off, but there's nothing m major going on, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think here, you know, on the euro, the, the big question is, you know, uh, are we going to get a little pop? And again, if you look at the way the equities are trading, they're starting to look a little bit heavy, right? So especially that would, uh, would, would, would increase the case for some kind of basing action here on euro, right? Um, especially so that would be, you know, equity, uh, uh, ES down, uh, Nikkei down, DAX down. If all those get traction, then you'd expect euro to rally, right? So it's looking like it's trying to carve up a little bit of a base here. So this hasn't changed as far as our outlook. So we're still looking for this to pop a little bit higher as we take out these levels and as equities uh, turn a little bit, um, a little bit bearish, right? Um, that, that, yeah, you know, that Nikkei is very, is looking like it's breaking down. We've been stalking that for a long time. Uh, you've got um, DAX. I think everybody's looking at DAX. It's almost um, it's kind of too good to be true. But, you know, you've got a huge uh, level in terms of the bigger, bigger time frames. Let's just get on, on, on something like a weekly, right? You see we've moved back into these highs and you've got a failure there, right? So the, the, the whole discussion here or the whole assumption is that as long as those highs hold, right, you've got a lot of potential room for this to correct. Right, you've got about 3% um, back into the 50, 6% uh, back into the 100, and about 10, 11% into the 200. So assuming that this level is holding, then you've got a chance for a little bit of a roll. You know, and if this rolls along with ES, uh, with ES, you know, then you would expect that euro to to bounce a little bit to get a a, a little bit of upside traction. Right, that's all. So you know, it should be. It should be uh, it should be interesting again. Uh, event risk stacked towards the uh, the um, the back end of back end of the day, right? Yeah, I mean here on in terms of Euro USD, I think it can be a little bit choppy here in, in terms of morning trade. But um, if you're looking at it, um, we discussed this the other day, right? And I posted it on the blog. Is we don't understand how you'd want to get uh, aggressively bearish into this zone it just doesn't make sense to us right if anything if this is going to go lower it probably needs to it needs to fail from a higher level right here if anything all this move into this zone you have all these moving averages supporting it's a very nice little little area and if you look at it in terms of uh, uh let me see if i can find my um uh, the, okay hold on where are we uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? I need to find the fibs. There you go. So fib retracement. If you look at look if you look at this low, into this high, right? We're long, and we said it's time to take a little bit of profit. Look at that. You've got this whole move, right back, right back down, and you've got a little beautiful confluence zone of the 50 back, of this whole move higher, and a chance to front run it. Right, this is a good, good, good example of where it makes sense to try and front run to front it, front run it with the moving averages supporting, meaning that you could even try and trade it with a much tighter stop for getting about the 61.8 and just playing on the front run of the 50 back, right? 
So it's a nice little confluence here. And so these longs are in play, right? These longs are in play. And as long as this level holds from a, from a closing basis, then this could be the move we've been talking about for a long time back to the 11040. And that would be in line with equities rolling, that DAX rolling, and then the euro trying to complete this move, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you see an awful lot of selling here, that, that, that 200 DMA, everybody and their goldfish is looking at that. So I would expect the day close above or below here to potentially give a very aggressive move. So that's clearly something I'd be focused on. But, you know, the technicals are um, the technicals are quite, quite nice. Right. But, um, you know, we'll have to see. Um, yeah, we'll have to see uh, on the daily uh, 61 point eight year. You talking about this move, I think. Right. If I read your comment correctly, it's also. Yeah. If you look at this shorter term term move, it's not a move we particularly like. But sure, you've got a lot of confluence. You've also got the 61.8 of that move. So there's clearly an awful lot of support. Right. So does it mean euro can't go down? No, absolutely not. Euro could puke. No problem. That's but what it does mean is that, as we always say, trying to understand the context, trying to understand where market is trading. Right giving yourself a chance to succeed right so if you see markets being down one two three four days in a row right off that 200 into confluence of the two moving averages into the possible front run of the bigger fib into the 50 to the 61 percent of the shorter term fib all these things lining up here the way we look at it is if you wake up with a bearish euro call and short it here in our humble opinion, you're prob probably not maximizing your, 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 your risk reward or your trading. Can it puke? Sure. Could you short this uh, into the hole with a very tight stop here and then get a beautiful risk reward trade? Of course you can. But if you're a humble student of the markets and you see how things play out, most likely if you spend your whole career trying to short into a brick wall or get long into a brick wall, no matter how tight your stop, especially in this choppy kind of market with a lot of data coming out, it's not that you're much better off trading the break, right? Waiting for a little uh, stabilize and then having a sell stop or a buy stop trading a break. Most likely you'll be able to trade tighter and get more MoMA on those than trying to really press in front of the levels. It's, it's just not that kind of market, right? That's all. Um, equities, um, very nice uh, uh, chop, <laughs> right? That 50 just keeps on holding, right? And again, we said don't get confused by velocity of move inside range. You just have to let it play out. You just have to let it play out. Well, I'm not gonna, nothing much has changed since the YouTube video we posted on Sunday. So that's, uh, I, I, I'd encourage you to, to watch that if you're interested. Uh, I would keep a very close eye on how uh, CHF is behaving today into this week. Just keep a quarter of an eye on uh, Euro CHF and another quarter of an eye on uh, on uh, on Swissy. Right, should be a little bit of a tell. Uh, don't forget to keep an eye on bonds and gold. Right, the underlying bid tone in there should should ring a little bell or should alert you to what's going on. The 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 underlying current in the market. That's a big tell. And again, that's um, that's pretty much where uh, where it is. Haven't got a lot of questions today, so it looks like hopefully I'm addressing most of the issues. Um, hope everybody has a great day. Um, well done again to all the guys. I see uh, Towson here. Uh, well done to all the guys on Darwin X. You know, stuff is really starting to to build up. Um, you know, see if you, as I mentioned, the blog post, you know, also see if you see some of the performance payouts now we're running on people getting 30 K a month. Right. So a, f a bunch of 50 scouts guys, you know, into the 10, 20 Ks. So perf performance fees on the month. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great, great feeling and great stuff for the guys who, who believed in, in the project for, uh, from the start. So, uh, so well done, hats off to you, good stuff guys. So again, I'll post the recording, I'll keep on trying to do these on Wednesdays mo mornings, as again, don't hesitate to ask questions, we'll, we'll, we, we tackle what we can. Hey Rags, have an awesome one, thank you so much, thank you for all those retweets. Again, a bunch of guys in here that always uh, retweet and, and, and like the content, I really appreciate it guys. Have an awesome one, thank you so much, bye bye, have a great